So the first question is, why do you want to be a U.S. senator, and, and why do you want to replace Lindsey Graham? Well, my, my uh, fundamental design was not to become a U.S. senator. It's to move the debate for the cause of liberty, and I feel like that that's the best spot for me to do it in. I was hoping someone else would step forward, maybe a, a Trey Gowdy or a uh, Jeff Duncan, but neither one of them has uh, made any interest of any intention of running. So I have uh, decided to offer myself up for service, but I, I believe that Lindsey Graham is uh, is not doing what he needs to be doing to help the cause. I feel like he's he's going in the other direction, and I believe he's becoming... He has too much in common with Barack Obama and John McCain than he does with the uh, Republican Party in South Carolina. Are you surprised that there's Republican uh, counties... That, that are coming out with uh, resolutions to censure Lindsey Graham? He, that, those are the folks that are paying attention the most, and, and they see that he is, has uh, definitely gone awry from where many folks in the party would like to see it go. They, they want to see a senator in more of the mold of a, of a you know, Tom Cruise or a Mike Lee or a, a Rand Paul versus someone in the mold of John McCain. Now, I, I listened to a speech you gave last week to the uh, 912 group down in the Low Country, and uh, one of the things you mentioned was, you know, we have veterans coming back that that are fighting for our freedom, but they're not getting their their VA benefits. And uh, um, you know, what are what are some of the solutions? You, you know, say that you're elected. What are some of the solutions you'd like to put in place to to help our veterans? Well, the, the bureaucracy is, is uh, unacceptable. I understand that a lot of the problems, obviously, are, you know, the federal government mismanages everything that they touch, and it is, uh, it's frightening to think that we're going to trust all of our health care to a uh, group of folks that, that treat our heroes with such disregard and contempt. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, you're definitely in support of Israel, um, but you feel like that, you know, maybe we're, as far as foreign policy, we're going in the wrong direction. What's your thoughts on uh, interventionism, nation building? Uh, give us your thoughts on foreign policy. Well, the, the, the nation that we need to be concerned with building is our own. And we have been, um, I'm trying to think of the, the best term to use, but we, we've just been derelict in the duty of building our own nation. I mean, we, we've got uh, the problems that, that we're not solving in our country, and, and maybe we need to look at those before we start being, you know, the, the experts on how to fix the world. I mean, uh, the current administration, with help from, from folks that, a lot of folks that we elected in the Republican Party, are, are assisting in Barack Obama dismantling the fundamental underpinnings of our nation, and, and we are on the verge of collapse and the fact that we want to go out and tell other nations how they should should operate their affairs obviously we need to get our house in order first and uh you know john mccain and lindsey graham uh, no surprise they they teamed up and, and went over to uh, egypt to talk to the muslim brotherhood and some of the leaders there um you know this is the same group that uh, suspended the Constitution and uh, advocated to, well, actually, uh, basically mandated that everybody uh, go under Sharia law. I mean, is that something you're going to do as a senator? Or, or give us your thoughts on on the Muslim Brotherhood. I'm concerned that, that our elected officials have not done what they, or, or at least the, the senior senator from South Carolina has not stood strong enough to defend our rights, to protect ourselves as it is the Second Amendment. But yet he is uh, quick to assist Obama in uh, arming folks that that many argue are prime to uh, do us harm. And and I know a lot of these groups that uh, we prop up, they're very anti-Christian. I mean, they persecute uh, Christians, not only Christians but other you know other religions. Um, and not only over overseas, it seems like there's an attack on on uh, on the religion here in the U.S., especially uh, Christianity. 
you know, we're, it seems like we're going down the wrong, wrong path. What would you do as a senator to make sure that not only Christianity is uh, defended uh, or, or religion of freedom? I mean, give us your thoughts on, on uh, you know, what you would do uh, as a senator to strengthen our, our First Amendment right. Well, the, the bottom line is that, that we had Republicans again go along with uh, Obama and his Supreme Court nomination to, you know, we've got folks that uh, he's appointed that are more sympathetic to world courts than they are on Constitution. And and my concern is that those folks are the very ones that will, will infringe upon our religious freedoms, our Second Amendment freedoms, freedoms, and basically the entire Bill of Rights are under assault. And it's frightening to think that that, that court is the one that will be making these decisions. And so many in our society do believe that that court has the final say in in our liberties, and we're in a uh, these are tough times. These are these are as uh, Thomas Paine said, these are the times that try men's souls, and I mean we are uh, we're in those times. So I'm getting a lot of feedback from conservatives. A lot of a lot of conservatives in the state, you know, they're very frustrated because when they talk to candidates, they hear candidates say, "Yes, I you know I'm conservative." I'm going to do uh, this. I'm going to defend the Constitution, but when they get to Washington, it seems like they they uh, you know change their tune. And they start voting, uh, you know, with, with you know start reaching across the aisle and uh, not compromising, just just voting for you know along with Democrats. I mean, what makes you different? What what makes you uh, different from the others? Uh, I would say that your your other opponents. Um, like uh, Nancy Mace and, and Richard Cash, what makes you different? Well, I have a record, and I'm criticized often for my inability to to, uh, to bend on my principles and compromise, and I, I just don't believe in compromising on principles. And, and, you know, I can't be criticized on the one hand that, I'm, that I don't bend, that I stand firm, and that I'm immovable when it comes to my principles, and then on the other hand be questioned as to, Am I going to stand for my principles? I've had that question asked at some some uh, events, you know, wanting to know where the, the proof is, and the proof's there. All they have to do is look at my voting records. I mean, it's a uh, it's bulletproof when it comes to constitutional issues, and and I put it up against any other member of the legislature or any other member of the legislature in any state house in this country. Now you got um, you've got noted from the uh, the Palmetto uh, Liberty Pack. I mean, you're you're like actually. The, you had the highest score for conservatism and a defender of uh, liberty. Is there other are there other organizations that you've been noted for your conservative record? Well, I've got a hundred uh, average lifetime score with the uh, Club for Growth, the South Carolina Club for Growth. Um, I've got an A plus on Nikki Haley's scorecard. I mean, I've, I've uh, was endorsed by Nikki Haley when when Mark Sanford was governor. I was endorsed by him. Um, Ron Paul endorsed me in my state senate race. You know, we have uh, we stood on principles, and, and it's been recognized by by the voters in Senate District 12, where we just got reelected in the primary, winning every precinct. Wow. Now, I got a, a question last week um, from the Low Country regarding uh, a, a Jasper County port proposal, and uh, you know, we hear of the the Port of Charleston and, and Senator Graham. You know, on Sunday talk shows, he talks about. Know, helping the Port of Charleston, um, but this is the question that that I was asked to ask all the candidates. It seems that that in 2026, the Port of Charleston is going to be at 80 percent capacity. So there's going to be a demand there, and there's a proposal out there um, that basically they, they say it's going to be uh, economically, financially feasible. That's going to produce one million jobs and bring billions of dollars into the state. The only issue is is the permitting process. That's the only thing holding them back. It's a 13-year permitting process. Now I, I don't know the mechanics of of that deal, um, uh, but I do know the fact that regulations, environmental regulations, and uh, all the red tape involved. Definitely stifles uh, economic freedom. So, what, what I, what I what, like what's your thoughts on that? that? I'd like to see the next time that that uh, Obama and, and Senator Graham are out to dinner, if he would first point out the fact that uh, 
uh, Port of Charleston is obviously not on the Gulf Coast. It's on the East Coast. And, and maybe give him a, a little geography lesson there. But as well, we've got natural gas. There's been studies that suggest we have natural gas off the coast of South Carolina. And we ought to be looking like they're doing in the Gulf, but getting permits for natural gas facilities off the coast up, up around Georgetown. I mean, that is a tremendous opportunity there. So, I mean, we, and the Port of Beaufort is obviously something that we need to be investigating. So, although I, I know he takes credit for the spending, the federal spending that's gone on, and of course he has been ripe and ready to, to raise the debt ceiling, but, but uh, that, that is something that I feel like he's going to, going to brag that, you know, he, brought home the bacon, you know, when it comes to Charleston Port, but what we'd like to see is these permits issued in Jasper, and I'd like to see them lead the charge on on uh, getting some natural gas exploration more on off the coast of Georgetown. Because we've got a port there as well that, that needs help. You know, along along those lines, as far as uh, a free enterprise, the Wall Street Journal came out and said that because of Obamacare, um, it's caused many companies uh, basically not even hiring full-time workers anymore. And and those who that are full-time, they're putting them, them uh, below 30 hours. And actually the headline said that we are now the part-time nation. And over 8 million people are, are working uh, part-time jobs. They're trying to find full-time work. And what they're having to do is they're, they're having to get multiple part-time jobs to make up their 40 hour work week. So, I mean, what, 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 what's the solution to uh, repeal Obamacare? Or what's your ideas? How can, you know, what will you do if elected to make, make us a full time nation again? Well, well when, number one, the, the Congress needs to defund Obamacare. Number two, in, in 2014, we're going to have to let some folks that are willing to go to war to, to stop Obamacare, and that's going to have to be done in the U.S. Senate. Um, we're going to have to, uh, to, to deal with that, and if we don't, businesses are going to do what businesses have always done. They're going to seek out less regulation, and they're going to seek out less, tax, less taxation, and that's basically why all the businesses move offshore, and you'll continue to see it move offshore, but the ones that don't have the ability to move offshore are going to seek to move their workforce into part-time to avoid the uh, regulation of Obamacare. You know, another thing uh, that Americans are really uh, concerned about and, um, you know, Jeff Duncan is actually investigating uh, why the IRS agents are training with AR-15s. Uh, recent, recently, there's been uh, reports of the Department of Education uh, conducting raids, um, you know, breaking into people's houses to, to investigate uh, student loan fraud. Uh, so the question is, why are they acting as almost a paramilitary uh, capacity? Um, I mean, this is, it seems like the bigger government gets, the smaller our rights. Um, it seems like our rights are, are we're losing our rights in, in a, such a rapid pace. I mean, first of all, why, why is there a need for the Department of Education? Well, there's not a need for a federal Department of Education. It's just a more federal government creep, and I applaud Jim DeMint and, and the Heritage Foundation on the work they're doing, and I was reading some of the, the uh, research, and, and they were talking about the fact that, you know, we've been fussing on defunding a lot of, of things the government is involved in, but we need to really take away their authority in certain areas, and, and you know, defunding it and taking away the things that they're responsible for will eventually take away the uh, ever-encroaching hand that the federal government has in their lives. So it's just a matter of, of pushing back, and we've got to we've got to like the officials that are willing to say enough enough that when they're asked the questions about which federal agencies they would eliminate, can rattle off a long list of them. And, and I'm curious to see, you know, what these folks that are running in primaries not only in South Carolina but around the nation are willing to stand behind the microphone and say what we need to eliminate. And what they'll, you know, say in public versus, you know, hiding behind these uh, consultants that tell them not to make stands on tough issues. I think that we need to have folks that are going to go out there and make those stands. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, the fact that we're in $17 trillion in debt. Um, you know, we're, we're spinning out of control. What, what's the solution to, to uh, this, addic this spending addiction? I mean, what will you do as Senator 
uh, well, to, you know, to get a balance. When the, but, economy, uh, when the economy gets, the country doesn't, uh, basically the government doesn't contract when the economy contracts. It continues to grow. It just grows at a less rapid pace. And, you know, I've had to face the facts in the business world that sometimes the better day never comes. And, you know, in the business world, you know, you, you just collapse. And I'm concerned that this nation's on the verge of collapsing. And, and we continue to ignore it and continue to push off the debt. But, you know, the only thing that's really keeping us afloat is the fact that, that uh, oil is traded in dollars. And, you know, once, once the rest of the world starts to realize that we're manipulating our currency and that we're pumping in $85, million, $85 billion a month into our currency, the house of cards will implode. And I'm hoping we can get it together before that happens. But, uh, you know, the, the only thing that keeps us moving is the rest of the world's in basically the same shape. But if they start electing officials that actually realize, which it is frightening to see that that uh, China is heading towards more capitalism as, as America heads towards communism. So, you know, it, it, you see what it did to, to Russia. And I think the Chinese are starting to wake up a little bit and realize that, you know, when you when you stifle people's desire for success through excessive taxation and regulation, you decide you, you basically um, prevent them from from putting the effort that it takes into growing the economy. Uh, Senator Bright, uh, is is President Obama is he a socialist? I, I I think Obama is is first and foremost. Um, he is is looking, you know, like many men in power do at, at growing his power. And obviously, socialism is, is one power of, of growing the government. I, I don't. If I were to destroy this nation, I would follow the playbook that that Obama has grown. Now, you can call it socialism, you can call it Marxism, you can call it you know whatever political doctrine you, you'd like to call it. I think he's basically tying into each. I mean, obviously. You know, Marx's his statement was to to each of his need, not to his ability. And I'm quite confident that Obama lives that mantra. So that would be easy to to say that he was a disciple of Marx. But it, you know, to get back to the to the greater point is that he is destroying this nation, and it's time we elect officials that are willing to take the task on it instead of going out to dinner with it. And I have one final question. Um, you know, as far as the uh, South Carolina State Senate. You passed so much, legis- uh, proposed so much legislation to protect and defend the unborn. Why are you, why are you so passionate for uh, pro-life issues? Well, you know, it's number one, it's, it's a humanitarian issue. And, you know, they, they are, are uh, humans that haven't left the womb. So we should be protecting them. But, but uh, another issue is, is swearing out to the Constitution of the United States of the, of the state of South Carolina you know, those children are being denied the right to due process. And they're being denied their right to a jury trial. And, and you know, basically they're being denied their rights that, that are are fundamental to the Bill of Rights. And if you ignore the rights for some, it will be a small encroachment upon those, but eventually it will, you'll ignore the rights of all. And I think that's where we're heading. Well, Senator Bright, thanks so much for your time. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are excited um, that uh, that you're officially announcing. Well, I, I look forward to I, I think we'll definitely be able to move the debate, and uh, we, we hope to be able to win the primary. Okay, thanks so much for your time. All right, thank you. Lord. Thank you. Bye.